2017 marks the end of another election cycle as we prepare for this fall's municipal vote. The State of the County Address recaps activities from 2016 and highlights some of the plans for the rest of this year. To bring us up to date is Reeve Leanne Beaupre. Leanne was elected to County Council in 2004 as Councillor for Division 3, the Grand Prairie South area. She became the Reeve in June of 2012 and was reaffirmed to the position in October 2013 to present. Leanne is committed to the economic growth of the South Peace. She is past chair of the Board of Directors of Community Futures, an organization dedicated to helping businesses and business owners, youth and community diversify their local economies. She is the chairperson for the Municipal Planning Commission and member of the Assessment Review Board. Leanne also served as on standing committee uh, issues committees for the Alberta Association of Municipal Districts and Counties. As well, she is a board member of the Grand Prairie Regional Agricultural Exhibition Society and a committee member representing the County of Grand Prairie in the Tri-Municipal Industrial Nexus Project. Leanne has been involved with several major, major infrastructure projects such as the High Speed Wireless Internet Project, the Claremont Community School and well Wellington Resource Centre, and the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum and the Crosslink County Sportsplex. Leanne is married to Brad, they have two sons, Morgan married to Terry and Tyson. Uh, and she has one grandchild that she spends her time spoiling, I'm sure. Uh, please welcome Reeve Leanne Beaupre. Thank you, Dennis, and good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you all here. We appreciate this opportunity to discuss with you what's happening in the County of Grand Prairie and to share our plans looking forward. And um, just to show you my age, I have to put my glasses on. I know Leslie did make my uh, font big enough, but I don't want to <laughs> inadvertently say something the wrong, wrong word. So uh, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce and the board members, Dan, and all their team for bringing us together again. Can, is that better? Again this year. We really are privileged to have such a strong chamber that works hard for business and the community at a local, provincial, and national level. And as we begin today, I'd like to recognize that we are meeting today on Treaty 8, traditional territory. And uh, I, Chief uh, Eugene Horseman was supposed to be here this morning and he may be coming yet later, and if he comes, he will be sitting here at the front table with us. Also with us today is Chris Workington, Member of uh, Parliament for Grand Prairie Mackenzie. Just give us a wave, Chris. <laughs> and I'd like to acknowledge that our uh, MLA from Grand Prairie Wapiti, Wayne Drysdale, has also joined us. <laughs> and just walking through the door as Cindy is waving at me is uh, the MLA for Grand Prairie Smokey, Todd Lowen. <laughs> Come on up, Todd. And a late addition to my speech, actually, it's my pleasure to uh, have him sitting at my table this year, is the past Reeve and uh, past MLA for Grand Prairie Smoky, Mr. Everett McDonald. <laughs> I'd also like to welcome all of our municipal neighbours who have joined us this afternoon. Throughout this room, there are a number of county employees who have also joined our councillors today, and I want to thank them for the work that they do on a daily basis. They really are the wheels that keep us in motion and moving forward. I do want to take a moment, though, to introduce my council, so I'd like you uh, to, as I say your name, to stand, and I'd ask if you could please hold your applause until the last person is named. Harold Bulford, Ross Sutherland, Bob Marshall, Brock Smith, and Karen Roosevelt. <laughs> Daryl Beeston and Corey Beck and Peter Harris were unable to join us today. And I'd like to recognize our Chief Administrative Officer, Bill Rogan. This spring, Bill received the Canadian Association of Municipal Administrators Long Service Recognition Award for 15 years of dedicated service to, pub to public service, municipal management, 
and fostering municipal excellence in the County of Grand Prairie. Congratulations, Bill. <laughs> and one more acknowledgement I'd like to make is to Councillor Brock Smith. Brock has been with us for 28 years. He was elected in 1986, and uh, Brock will not be returning in the upcoming election. But I know Brock. He places great value on our community, and so I'm quite confident that he'll find other avenues to share his immense knowledge base and dedication for his community and the people who live here. Thank you, Brock. So getting started today, we have a short video that provides an overview into the County of Grand Prairie. Think of it as kind of a window into our operations, our spending, and most important, how that provides value to our residents and to our local communities. Have you ever wondered how the tax dollars you pay to the County of Grand Prairie are used? Or if you're getting the best possible value for the money you pay? We'd like to take you on a short tour of your tax dollars at work. Everything we do at the County of Grand Prairie is designed to deliver value by creating a safe, caring community where people live, work, and play. Did you know that the county covers almost 6,000 square kilometers of land? That's roughly the size of Prince Edward Island. The land area of the county is comprised of farms, acreages, hamlets, and a number of independent municipalities. The county is a good neighbor and works with other communities to deliver a number of joint services. Now, let's have a close look at how the county delivers value in all of the communities it serves. The County of Grand Prairie builds and maintains a large roadway system that includes about 3,600 kilometers of paved and gravel roadways. That's about three times the length of the province. County roads are connected by more than 300 bridges, the highest number of any municipality in Alberta. Building and maintaining roadways and bridges for safe travel is the highest county expense and one of the top priorities. In fact, it costs about $1 million to upgrade and pave just 1.6 kilometers of roadway. Whether maintaining bridges, spreading gravel, paving roads, fixing potholes, or clearing snow. The work goes on year round. The county invests in innovative practices, critical infrastructure projects, and proactive planning. All of this contributes to a vibrant community well into the future. The county offers several bin locations and waste and recycling facilities where residents can drop off items. A map with recycle and waste disposal locations is on the county website. Safe communities are another top priority in the County of Grand Prairie. Regional fire, emergency, and enforcement services are available around the clock to respond to emergency situations. Fire and enforcement personnel also provide programs that focus on prevention and education. The County Regional Fire Service delivers a FireSmart program to educate residents and businesses on how to reduce the risk of fires and wildfires. The County Regional Enforcement Services are leaders in the delivery of law enforcement and safety programs. The county is also the first municipality in the province to provide funding for an RCMP policing program to work with enforcement services and focus on crime prevention. Whether patrolling the community, educating students, or responding, regional enforcement serves and protects. Remember, if you have an emergency, call 911 first. The county of Grand Prairie is largely a rural community. Agriculture is important to the region, and the county provides unique and innovative agriculture programs, from environmental weed and pest control to soil conservation and alternative crop trials. The county places a high priority on supporting its agriculture families and businesses. Through community, recreation, and culture grants, the County of Grand Prairie provides funding for local nonprofit groups and neighboring municipalities. In the spirit of fostering a caring and compassionate community, the county also helps fund a wide variety of special programs to help individuals and families who may be experiencing difficult situations. The County of Grand Prairie is a wonderful place to enjoy the outdoors. There is so much to do in our many parks, campgrounds, green spaces, and trails. You can walk where the dinosaurs roamed or see how they lived at the world-class Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum. Take in a scenic lake or river. Enjoy a game of golf. Or families and individuals can enjoy a number of activities at various recreation facilities. There you have it, a brief overview of your tax dollars at work, creating value every day.
For more information, visit our website at www.countygp.ab.ca slash value or contact us at 780-532-9722. Well, that's a, a lot of information in a, a really short time. So I'm sure this gave you more insight into our planning and the work we do on a daily basis. But as my fellow municipal councillors and many of others know uh, and often can appreciate, no matter how much planning you do, Mother Nature has some of her own ideas. Over this, over this past year, the county faced one of the most challenging weather years on record due to excess moisture combined with warm weather, definitely the worst that I've seen since I've been on council. So I'd like to thank you for your patience. And thank you to our crews for their hours and efforts making the roads passable and safe. One of the key areas for the county during budget deliberations is transportation infrastructure. And conditions like we had this year, along with the vast number of roads and bridges we maintain annually, we've had, this has made this very costly, but indeed very important. In April, the county designated over 40% of our annual operator budget to a road and bridge maintenance and capital projects for this year. Funding for our road and bridge construction and maintenance program has increased over 26% from last year. Why the 26%? Well, council has approved additional funding to have the highest traveled gravel roads re-graveled. This brings the total amount of roads re-graveled this year to 1,260 kilometers, just over a third of the county's road network. We also accessed our gravel pits for the first time ever in March, two months earlier than normal, to repair the gravel roads most heavily affected. And we crushed a higher amount of gravel than any other year. We also hired an extra crew to complete road projects from last year that were carried over or delayed due to weather and to regrade and pave portions of local roads and bridges. Economic development for the region relies on the county's transportation infrastructure. Those who travel these roads to go to work and school rely on us for well-maintained and safe roads. Our commitment to transportation infrastructure doesn't stop there. With $33.2 million already designated for transportation capital in 2017, Earlier this month, Council approved an additional $20 million for road improvement projects over the next two years. These funds target the rebuilding of existing roads, gravel roads, upgrade gravel roads to pavement, and improve intersections in all nine county divisions. The county continues to grow. Our last federal census shows that our population outpaces the national and provincial rates. The county currently sits at just over, or just sits at over 22,000 people, not including the population of the towns and villages. We're starting to see a turnaround of the economy, and this is quite evident just seeing the increase in traffic on Highway 40 and the decreasing unemployment rates. I'm sure many of you saw that today as you came out here down Highway 40, the amount of traffic there is. We're excited about the partnerships with our neighbors the MD of Greenview, and the City of Grand Prairie, exploring opportunities to develop a world-class industrial park south of Grovedale in the MD of Greenview. This partnership promotes shared goals between our municipalities while supporting each municipality's autonomy and perspectives. There is a massive potential for this project that has caught a national attention, or pardon me, attention globally, and that's positive for the entire region. The county's investment in Alberta Innovate's geothermal study demonstrates our commitment to diversifying our economy. The study showed there are reservoirs in the county with the potential of providing geothermal power over the long term to communities and industries. We will be working with Alberta Innovate's partner municipalities and industry to determine potential of a geothermal district heating facility or geothermal electrical electricity generation facility in this area. The development of a 50-year growth strategy is currently underway in the county, which will serve as a guide in planning for long-term growth. This is an important undertaking that actively engages the public, listening to you and understanding and incorporating your priorities. 
If you haven't already participated or you want to keep updated on the process, please check inside the materials on the table and you, this describes how you can do so. The final strategy will be presented to Council in December of this year. We're working closely with the development community, creating new guidelines to provide developers with a framework for design and aesthetics for the new development in the county. And we recently held our fourth Economic Business Development Summit, connecting investors and developers. Land is being developed and tenants secured for the Grand Prairie Rail and Multimodal Logistics Park in Claremont. The development of this site shows the continued growth and economic diversity in the region. This is a good opportunity to update you on the follow-up since the release of the economic impact study and gap analysis conducted on the new hospital last year, led by the Chamber. A few weeks ago, the county met with some of our partner stakeholders involved in this project, the Chamber, the City, the MD of Greenview, Grand Prairie Regional College, Grand Prairie Regional Hospital Foundation, and Northern Alberta Development Council. We discussed community readiness for the hospital. We put a plan together to move forward with recommendations from the report. And I'd like to thank the Chamber for their leadership on this collaborative project. And I commend our municipal neighbors and regional stakeholders for the work that they're doing together on such an important initiative, one that benefits the entire region on so many levels. The report identified gaps in service we need to address to be ready for this new facility, and one of those being public transit from areas outside of the city. We're currently exploring options for public transit between Claremont and the city, and we're eager to work with local communities to address the gaps and opportunities identified in the study. We are also working closely with our West County neighbours to expedite construction of the Beaver Lodge Hospital. I want to thank Mayor Leona Hansen for her commitment to this initiative. In Claremont, the long-awaited Grand Spirit Foundation Seniors Facility Lakeview is set to open this summer and will house seniors from across the region, helping fill a gap in seniors' housing, which, contrary to the rumors, is not full. And they're actually doing, uh, last week they did public uh, open houses and tours. And in January, children will be filling the classrooms at the county's new play school in Whispering Ridge, adjacent to the new Peace Wapiti School Board K-8 school. What we're seeing is when families move to our area for work, many might not only bring their children, but often they're followed by their parents. So when we're planning in response to economic growth, we're also considering the needs of our seniors, population, and having the services in place to support them. Through our discussions with communities throughout the county and understanding their individual priorities, we've been able to partner in many, uh, pardon me, partner in a number of projects that support growth and development within these communities. I'd like to highlight some of those as they're really exciting to see the activity across the county. Our 2017 capital budget included nearly three and a half million dollars in public works water, wastewater projects, including projects in Teepee Creek, Bazanson, and Valhalla Centre. This helps to ensure that these communities can continue to grow and access safe and reliable source of drinking water and wastewater disposal. We are working with Bazanson on an area structure plan to guide future land use and infrastructure development within that area. And we received an Alberta Community Partnership Grant to complete intermunicipal development plans, or IDPs, with our rural neighbours, Wembley, Hythe, Beaver Lodge, and Sexsmith, as part of the Modernized Municipal Government Act. We currently have an IDP with the city. These IDPs provide a framework for future growth and land use. We also partnered with local communities to receive funds for a stormwater and basin study in Sexsmith, a regional road network assessment led by the, by the Town of Beaver Lodge, and a handy bus feasibility study led by the Town of Wembley. We are moving forward on various wastewater and water projects in the Claremont and Wembley area as well. While we, are, we have faced some of the delays on these projects, we've recently met with the Board of Directors from Aquaterra and conveyed the concerns we've heard from the developers. We've been assured by the board that these projects will move forward in a timely fashion. 
One of these projects is a water line to Wembley. Provincial and federal funding has been received for this project. Engineers are moving into the detailed design phase in order to reduce costs and expedite the project. The county has offered the use of our road right away for that water line, and we are assisting with the land acquisition in, for easements in areas where there is no right away. This line includes a booster station in the Damsdale area for future water supply. Watch for a community meeting scheduled later this summer around this topic. And as we develop throughout the county, we not only have, a, have to build smart, but we have to have the infrastructure in place to support smart thinking. The county is poised as a smart community looking for solutions to challenge through innovation and technology. For example, we've made our open data and our public web map, map more user-friendly, and we're making it easier to plan your leisure activities with an online reservation system at the Pipestone Creek Park and Campground. And as a member of Alberta's Smart City Alliance, we join communities embracing digital technology to support their operations and create connectivity to their citizens. This is a forward-thinking approach uh, to decision-making and ensures we remain connected and competitive on a global scale. And to remain competitive, the voices of our MLAs and their ability to effectively represent local constituents is critical. In May, the Electoral Boundaries Commission presented their report of recommendations for the new electoral boundaries in Alberta. The changes have made our local divisions, the changes made, pardon me, to our local divisions are of great concern to the county. The commission set boundaries primarily based on achieving population equality in every division. But this is neither reasonable nor effective. Effective representation involves many factors, and equalizing population is just one. Under their recommendations, Grand Prairie Wapiti constituency is eliminated. A new urban division of Grand Prairie is made up of the city of Grand Prairie residents. However, just under 20,000 city residents would become part of a new rural urban Grand Prairie Smoky division that would extend past Fox Creek. West County would become part of the Central Peace Notley constituency across the Saddle Hills. These divisions group our northern communities together in ways that do not properly reflect our communities and our natural boundaries and trading areas. And making Grand Prairie Smoky larger and taking in more communities will make it very difficult to achieve proper and fair representation for our rural citizens. In July, the county will be responding to the report, advocating to maintain the status quo at the commission public hearings being held here in Grand Prairie. If you have concerns about the boundary changes, we encourage you to also present your views at the commission hearings or with a written submission. I know that the Premier's office is already hearing from residents, so I encourage you to call the Premier's office if you have those same concerns. Another area that is top of mind for people is safety. The county's Regional Enforcement Services Department is one of the most comprehensive in the province. We offer a full level enforcement services, animal control, bylaw, peace officers, and we were the first municipality in Alberta to provide the fully integrated service where enhanced RCMP members work out of the municipal offices directly for the municipality. One of our enhanced RCMP officers works with the Grand Prairie Crime Reduction Unit, or CREW, and another works for the Grand Prairie General Investigative Service, the GIS unit. Last month, the county hired an additional RCMP member, which brings our team to have, of enhanced officers to six, all which are paid 100% by the County of Grand Prairie, in addition to our bylaw and peace officers. Of course, safety includes ad addressing risk of fire, and we all know too well what the destruction a community can see. As part of our wildfire mitigation strategy, the Dunes Bear Creek area is a priority. We have received $162,000 in a provincial free fire smart grant, and with an additional $30,000 contributed by the county, 
We're going to thin trees and remove dead and fallen trees in the Bear Creek South area and, pardon me, south and east of the city. The risk in this area is that the creek's path could act as a wick to carry the fire into the rural subdivisions and back it, or, and into the city of Grand Prairie. The county has been long aware of the risk in our area and has been very proactive in addressing that risk. We sincerely appreciate the province's long-term support for this work. Last year, Council was very pleased to support the construction of Sexsmith's new fire hall, and our 2018 budget will include a water tender for this community. We've been working with other communities in the county to identify their needs, and as a result, our long-range capital plan also includes new facilities in La Glace and Teepee Creek, as well as pre-planning to assist Beaver Lodge when they're ready to build a new hall. And we're very proud of the collaboration with Horse Lake First Nation, which recently saw six individuals from Horse Lake graduate from the county firefighter training program. And this partnership between the county, the province, and Horse Lake First Nation provides Horse Lake with emergency training to better serve their community, as well as new emergency equipment. And I, have under, I understand and I've been told that they've been actively responding to calls in their community. That's great. We've been talking about growth and the initiatives in the county to ensure we manage that growth well. We cannot underestimate the value of ensuring we have not only the bricks and mortars, but also the programs in place to support people's wellness and well-being. We must have the infrastructure and services in place to support quality of life for families and individuals of all ages. And we appreciate that when making decisions about where to invest, it's the communities themselves that understand their needs and priorities. This year, we supported hundreds of organizations with $8.9 million in community grants. And that, I believe, really speaks to the personal commitment of the residents, the staff, their volunteers, those that are, who are putting these grants and these funds to work for their communities. I cannot talk about quality of life without speaking about the work of our Family and Community Sports Services Department. This year, County FCSS celebrated our 50th anniversary. Congratulations. For the past 50 years, FCSS has delivered social and prevention programs to enhance the well-being of people and communities. They aim to create proactive and lasting solutions. They're the foundation builders, and their work ranges from early childhood development to youth programs to home care and senior support. We understand the importance of tending to the environment and supporting our residents in, this, in their efforts. The county is proud to be the recipient of the Alberta Recycling 2016 Collection Site of Excellence Award for the Claremont Center for Recycling and Waste Management. Now that's a mouthful. I commend the center's employees and those who use the facility for their commitment to recycling and a sustainable future. We have some of the best agricultural land in the country, and we work with our local farming community to support production, profitability, sustainability, and advocate on their behalf through our Agricultural Service Board. The county offers a range of innovative programs such as managing weed infestation, pest and disease control, and problem wildlife, just to name a few. Sustainability of the environment also extends to our recreation planning. So much of our play takes place outside. One of these areas in the, is in the Wapiti River Valley. This is an area where we need to protect, while at the same time providing people with a place for low impact recreation. As part of our Wapiti River, pardon me, Wapiti Recreation Area Management Plan, we've received First Nation approval, and uh, the next step is public consultation, which will likely play, take place this fall. Many of you use this area and enjoy it, so please voice your priorities during the consultation process. And as an update to the Regional Mac Recreation Master Plan, we have now formed a joint committee with our rural neighbours, including the MD of Greenview and the City of Grand Prairie, to ensure the priorities of each community is represented in recreation planning throughout the region. And when I look at the planning and the activities through the county, I'm excited. 
you know, we're planning in a way that's uh, sustainable, one that considers the environment and the people living and working here today and into the future. We're attracting people not only for the opportunities that exist, but because the county is a place where they want to come and set down roots and call home. This year, we're celebrating Canada's 150 years of confederation. The county is pleased to have awarded $100,000 in Canada 150 grants throughout the region. Many of these events are planned by community organizations. We've had a long history to be proud of in Canada and in the county, one that truly goes beyond the 150 years. So make sure you take time out of your schedule to go to these local events that celebrate our history and our future. And thank you for joining us today, and we invite you to take the folders that are on the table home with you. And again, thank you to the Chamber of Commerce and to Evergreen Park. Have a safe and wonderful summer. Thank you.